thoughts about the carnivore diet um, and, you know, specifically for type one diabetics? Um, yes. Yeah, absolutely. I think there's a lot and, and we've seen certainly a lot of success with type two diabetes people coming off medications, losing weight, you know, those are that are insulin uh, utilizers often reduce or eliminate their insulin. You know, we saw this study at Harvard where 92% of the type two diabetics got off all their insulin, which I think is quite remarkable with the type ones, you know, as you know, it is a, uh, an auto, often an autoimmune condition where we have some degree of dysfunction of our, our, our you know, beta cells, uh, whether they're destroyed or they're in quiescence is, is kind of debatable. I think there's evidence that they probably kind of go silent and they stop losing the capacity to secrete insulin rather than completely dying. Um, and many diabetics, even long-term diabetics, still retain the capacity to secrete a small amount of insulin. And we can see that with C-peptide and there may be different subtypes. Clearly, there are different subtypes. Um, what I, you know, I think, you know, obviously the goal is to avoid complications, right? We don't want to have the nephropathy. We don't want the retinopathy. We don't want the cardiovascular disease. And so the question is, what is going to get us there? And some people will say, well, just keep your insulin as low as possible. You're, you're sorry, your glucose as low as possible. And that does seem to help for some people, but I, I'm not, I don't know a hundred percent if that's that is the only thing there. There's other people would say that, you know, we want to keep your insulin low. And there's a there's a there's there's certainly a uh, phenomenon called uh, diabulimia, which you're probably familiar with, where people will intentionally not take insulin so they don't gain weight, and basically just their blood sugar goes up and they they urinate it all out and they end up not losing weight. And some people do that as a dietary strategy, which also has its problems. And so, I think you know, in your situation, you know, I'm I'm just thinking about where you're at with with a, with an increased uh, requirement, for instance. So. Studies will suggest that the average human pancreas puts out the equivalent of between 30 and 50 IUs of insulin a day. That's kind of average person. Now, the average person, you know, in the United States is probably kind of a sick average person. So maybe that number might be lower. And obviously, it's going to be weight dependent. I, my pancreas would put out more insulin than yours, I, I would assume, because I'm a bigger person, right? So I would expect. But you're going from someone with low musculature. So you think about this. I'm putting on more muscle. How do I put on more muscle? Well, I need insulin to do that. Insulin is not, we need some insulin. So I think the, the thought is that I, I just want to keep as minimal insulin as possible. And I can, I understand that, you know, one, it's expensive or it can be two. It's just the thought of, I have to taking more and more medication. Am I getting worse? I think you have to put it in the context of what's going on with my body. If I'm putting on muscle and I'm getting stronger and I, and I need 10, 20% more insulin to do that, is that really a bad thing? I don't know that it is. You know, I, I think, you know, I've seen people go on a carnivore diet where they're like, oh, I'm, oh I'm, I'm only taking, you know, five units of basal and nothing else. I don't need anything for my meals. And they're celebrating that, but at the same time, maybe they're losing too much weight. Maybe they're losing muscle mass because, you know, insulin has this anabolic effect. It's one of the more powerful anabolic hormones we have. So I don't think we should be completely willing to say I want insulin as low as possible. I think there's a, there's some nuance here. Obviously, if you get in a situation where you're using 60, 70, 80, 90, 100 units a day to cover all the carbs, that's probably a problem. But if you're using enough so that you can maintain muscle mass, I don't think it's as big of an issue. And then, you know, whether it's a six one or a, uh, you know, as, as you probably know, most endocrinologists are thrilled if anybody's in at six, you know, they're, they're just happy if you're under seven. And so I think, I think their bar is much probably worse than, than, what we'd like to see if you're talking, I'm sure you're familiar with guys like Dr. Richard Bernstein, who, mm -hmm. who advocates, you know, you know, five or below five, and he wants an average blood glucose of, you know, 83 milligrams per deciliter, which is quite, you know, it's quite low. I, I, I'm not going to, you know, like I said, I tend to take the approach that these are still all proxy, proxy markers, both uh, glucose number, both insulin requirement. And, and then I, I, I tend to say, well, what's actually going on with our, with our physique, with our muscular, with our body composition? And then you, and then of course you want to pay attention to those things that you're worried about. What's my, what is my, what are my eyes doing? What's, is there any retinopathy there? How's my kidney function? Uh, you know, how, what is going on with my, my cardiovascular status? And so those things are, are what we really want to be concerned about. And then I think these other things are, you know, they're, they're kind of, they're kind of, you know, we don't want to be ridiculous on the amount of insulin we, we use. We don't, we, obviously we don't want our blood glucose getting up into these really, really high levels. But beyond that, um, I, you know, I think there's 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 some nuance here, so I think we just have to put it in those terms. If that makes sense to you. Mm -hmm.